Hey guys, welcome back. Let's talk about income from a house property. This particular section talks about income that you are going to derive from house property. So section 22 talks about the chargeability. Now then section 23 is there which lets, uh, lets down the conditions with regards to income from house property and what do we mean by house property. So first we we'll talk about conditions for chargeability. So property should consist of any of any land or uh, any building or land appurtenant there too. So what do we mean? Building includes not only residential buildings, but also factory buildings, offices, shops, go down. So anything, any kind of property, any kind of building is there. That is there and any land is attached to it. For example, garage, garden, any area attached to it, which is not independent, which is attached to the building. And if you are getting some income out of it, that is your income from house property. SAC must be owner of the property without being the owner of the property you cannot get income from that particular property so you should be owner that is also there uh, actual owner or deemed owner whatever it is there are certain conditions to it then use of property the property may be used for any purpose but it should not be used by the owner for the purpose of any business or profession carried on by him the profit of which is chargeable to tax so if you are getting some uh, if you're doing some business and you're uh, making some money and that money is taxed as income from uh, like profits from the business so then it would not be included that is what we are trying to say property held as stock in trade what do we mean by stock in trade annual value of house property will be charged under the head income from house property where it is held by sec as stock in trade of a business also so in that case if it is treated as stock in trade then then, then also it is uh, charged as income from house property then something called as composite rent what is composite rent composite rent is like if you're charging rent altogether for like furnished property or some other uh, services you are providing like lift security power backup so if you're charging total rent altogether for everything combined with the property then we call it as composite rent then tax treatment of composite rent it has, it has to be separated composite rent has to be separated between other things then what do we have manner of splitting up it has to be splitted up uh, depending upon how much you are charging so if let out building and other assets are inseparable then in that case uh, two different uh, you know uh, letting is fixed separately this is applicable so how do we do when a composite rent is received from letting out of building and other assets uh, not uh, and they are not separable the property does not accept let uh, accept letting out with other then the rent is taxable either as business income or income from other sources that that may be the case but if it is separable then separately we will charge one will be charged from income from house property other will be charged either from business income or income from other sources depending upon how you are treating it then 2.4 talks about income from house property situated outside India for outside India it depends upon what is your residential status now how do we determine residential status we have a separate video on that so please have a look on to it how do we determine residential status and how does it impact so for house property if you are resident individual if you are ordinary resident resident and ordinary resident in that case it is going to be taxable even if it is situated outside but for non-resident and for resident but not ordinary resident it will be taxed in india only if it is brought to india otherwise not taxed now we are coming to the actual section called section 23 determination of annual value now how do we determine there are three things first we determine gross annual value then we reduce municipal taxes paid by the owner during the previous year and by subtracting it we get to, to the actual answer called as net uh, annual value or nav now before getting into the nav we have to determine first gav because on gav only we are reducing the municipal taxes so first how do we determine gav gav is calculated on this thing there is something called as expected rent and there is something called as actual rent so how much you are expecting for example you are expecting 10,000 and actually you got 8,000 then in that case which one should be considered as your GAV higher value why higher value because it is your income now when it comes to income government wants more income to be included in your income so that tax would be more when it comes to exemptions government want to give you least exemption so in case of ex uh, exemptions you will see uh, the rules will, will be saying least of the following but when it comes to income the rule says higher of the following so higher of what expected rent and actual rent now how do we determine expected rent for that expected rent we have this particular table you look into it the expected rent is the higher of fair rent and municipal value there are two values fair rent and municipal value but restricted to standard rent. Now, all these values would be given in the questions, 
one is fair rent fair rent is what would be the fair rent of this particular property by looking into it then there is some municipal value determined by the municipal corporation that is the municipal value and then there is a standard rent across this particular area fair rent is what you say by your judgment municipal value is what municipal government uh, municipal corporation gives you and standard rent is what standard in the area so it, it it is going to be higher of fair rent and municipal value but it cannot exceed standard rent right so if fair rent is 10,000 and municipal value is 12,000 then higher of these two 12,000 will be taken but if standard rent is just 10,000 then 12,000 will be reduced to 10 but if standard rent is 15,000 then 12,000 is within the limit of standard rent so standard rent is the maximum limit it cannot go beyond standard rent that is what we are trying to say simple enough now what next we are trying to say that like uh, for example this this is explained in terms of equations it has nothing to do this is again uh, just two values you need to consider and then there is a question onto it how do we determine so a municipal value is given for example if you're looking into this illustration for house one municipal value is 80 fair rent is 90 so which is the higher of these 90 fair rent will be taken as uh, fair rent is 90 and then it will be compared to standard rent standard rent is not given then this the same value is becoming your expected rent actual rent is 72 so which is higher 90,000 so 90,000 will be your uh, GAV in uh, house two uh, the highest value between 55 and 60 is 60 which is well within the limit of standard rent of 75 and uh, again the 60 will be compared against actual rent which is 72 so 72 becomes the higher value 72 becomes your GAV uh, subsequently other questions are also like that house 3 4 5 simple enough I believe right if you want to understand just take a screenshot of this solution is also given uh, just first have uh, take a screenshot of this question try to solve by yourself if you are uh, solving it correctly then compare it with the actual solution here it is you can take screenshot of this solution also and if you are not even able to solve then you can take hint from this solution or if you are solving it by yourself you can verify it later on that is what it is right now what was this condition this was when uh, what it is the first situation where the property is let out throughout the previous year okay this is about section 23 subsection 1 clause a or b this is when the property is let out that means you have given the property on rent but what happens if the property is not let out throughout the year if it is vacant for some part then that wake for that vacancy period expected rent will be reduced so where let out property is vacant for part of the year and owing to vacancy the actual rent is lower than the expected rent then the actual rent received or receivable will be GAV of the property because of course expectation is going to be more but actual is always going to be less in that case actual rent only will be considered not the expected rent because i was expecting 10000 monthly rent so annually it becomes 120000 but for 6 months my property was vacant so actual rent is always going to be for 6 months only right even if it i am getting 10000 per month but for 6 months it is going to be only 60000 not 120 so higher of the two value is not a good uh, good answer to be taken that is why we will take only the actual rent if the property is vacant right that is what we are trying to say then in case of self occupied property or unoccupied property this means what property where you are living yourself you are not letting it out so in that case gav becomes nil because you you are not expecting anything you are staying in that same property right that is called and un unoccupied property again means no, nobody has uh, stayed there so the expression unoccupied property refers to a property which cannot be occupied by owner by the reason of his employment business operation as a different place and resides at such place in a building for example you have a property at your native place but nobody is staying there that is an occupied property there also this gv becomes nil right the benefit of nil uh, annual value is available only for up to two sops or unoccupied properties you cannot take uh, this advantage for more than two right now why why do we consider it as nil because there are certain advantages to it the benefit of nil annually in respect of up to two self occupied house properties is available only to an individual or huf no deduction for municipal taxes is allowed if it is zero then no municipal tax deduction is allowed because ultimately even if you reduce something from zero automatically your nav will also become zero so gav nav both become zero where a house property is let out for part of the year and sop for part of the year in that case what happens if a single unit of a house property is self occupied for part of the year and let out for the remaining part of the year then expected rent for the whole year shall be taken into account for determining the GAV the ER for the whole year shall be computed within uh, with the actual rent for the let out period and whichever is higher shall be occupied as the GAV however municipal taxes for the whole year is allowed as deduction so it is similar to what we saw in the first scenario where the property is let out for the entire year 
in case of deemed to be let out property so what happens in certain cases if your uh, two properties are allowed as sop but you, if you have more than two property other properties will be automatically considered as let out properties even if you are not letting them out now where the sac owns more than two properties for self occupation then the income from any two properties at the option of the sac shall be computed under the self occupied property category and their annual value will be annual value will be nil the other sops or unoccupied property shall be considered as deemed let out properties the option can be changed uh, year after year in a manner but it is going to be deemed uh, now in case of deemed lop deemed let out property the expected rent shall be taken as the gav because deemed lop means you don't have any actual rent so only whatever the expected rent value comes that is only considered going to be considered as gav now point number 6 in case of a house property held as stock in trade so in some cases property consisting of any buildings or lands appurtenant there to may be held as stock in trade and the whole or any part of the property may not be let out during the whole or any part of the previous year in such cases the annual value of such property or part of the property shall be nil the benefit would be available only for up to 2 years from the end of the financial year in which certificate of completion of construction of the property is obtained from the competent authority so if nothing is happening in that case like if you are treating it as a business property then in that case property would be held as a stock in trade and if it is stock in trade then in that case also the gav becomes nil in case of a house property a portion let out and a portion sop self occupied right so here how do we do income from any portion or part of a property which is let out shall be computed separately under the let out property category and the other portion or part which is self occupied shall be computed under the self occupied property so you have to determine like if it is 50 50 so 50% would be lop 50% would be sop if it is 60 40 so accordingly the uh, separation would be done so there is no need to treat the whole property as a single unit you have to divide you have to consider two separate units one would be considered as sop partially even if it is partially other values would be accordingly uh, split up on on some reasonable up, up basis what we can say the space has to be on such other reasonable basis property taxes if you want to consider again pro rata basis would be considered attributed is provided for floor on a reasonable basis right national income instead of real income now sometimes what happens there is a notion there is no actual income when we are taking expected rent in case of deemed lop and other cases when there is no actual rent then that becomes notional income there is no real income actually that is also something that is mentioned over here now treatment of unrealized rent unrealized rent means where you did not receive your rent the actual rent received receivable should not include any amount of rent which is not capable of being realized now unrealized rent means there is one something called as rent which is not received and there is something called which is not going to be receivable something that is not going to be receivable is unrealized okay however the conditions prescribed in rule 4 should be satisfied they are the tenancy is bona fide like it is not illegal right it should be bona fide the defaulting tenant has vacated or steps have been taken if the tenant is not paying rent then he should have uh, taken some steps some you know uh, what we can say action against the tenant to make him vacate the property the defaulting tenant is not in occupation of any other property of the sac if you are making him vacate from one property and giving him another property then that should not be the case the sac has taken all reasonable steps to institute legal proceedings for the recovery of the unpaid rent or satisfies the assessing official that legal proceedings would be useless so whatever it is some action should be it should be a genuine case basically what we are trying to say if it is not a genuine case then it will not be considered property tax taxes or municipal taxes property taxes are allowable as deductions from gav subject to the two conditions it should be borne by the sac and it should be actually paid during the previous if it is not paid then it, the deduction will not be given if property taxes levied by a local authority for a particular previous year are not paid then no deduction however if any subsequent other years when you are paying like if you are not paying in the current year you will not get it in the current year if you are paying in the later year you can claim it in the later year that is what we are trying to say right simple enough now there is an illustration uh, rajesh a british national as resident and ordinary resident in india during the previous year 2023 he owns a house in london which he has let out for 10000 per month euros uh, the he the municipal taxes paid to the municipal corporation of london is 8000 euros during the previous year 22 23 the value of euro in indian rupees rupees 95 compute simple enough gav is given uh, the the rent actual received is the gav less whatever uh, is uh, what we can say municipal tax is paid you will get your nav and multiply it with the uh, currency rate you will get it in the indian currency that is what we have done here is the answer gross annual value is whatever is the rent 10000 into 12 months into 95 per euro 
less municipal taxes 8000 euros into 95 per euro you get the nav right this is what is nav now when you have calculated the nav or net annual value there are certain deductions from nav as well so as to arrive at the income from house property what are those deductions deductions under section 24 first is standard deduction called 30 percent of nav simple enough second is interest on borrowed capital if you have borrowed some money to acquire the property now you are paying repaying the borrowed money and if there is interest into it that interest can be claimed as deduction 30 percent of nav is allowed as deduction under section 24a this is a flat deduction and is allowed uh, irrespective of the actual expenditure incurred this is what this is like overall how much you have incurred we are not looking at government is giving you standard 30 percent whether you have incurred or not it doesn't matter we are assuming that anybody has to incur some expenditure over the property in some aspects so that is that is why we are getting 30 percent deduction the SEC will not be entitled to deduction of 30 percent in the following cases as the annual value itself is nil when when it is a uh, stock in trade and when it is sop there you're not getting because <laughs> NAV itself is zero so 30 percent of zero is also going to be zero simple enough to understand logical enough to understand yes second point says interest on borrowed capital is allowed as deduction under section 24b now there is something called as interest for pre-construction period if i have to build a property i have to look take loan today itself right because this construction is going to take a few years now until and unless the property is constructed i cannot get income from it right so income will start only after the construction but loan has to be started before the construction so that is what is interest for pre-construction period so if that is the case what happens you can claim this interest for up to five years in equal annual installment so if it is like total interest pre-construction interest happens to be five lakhs so you can claim it in five five years in equal installment that is five lakhs divided by five which comes to one lakh per year interest for the year in which construction is completed so interest relating to the year of completion of construction or property can be fully claimed in that year respective of the date of completion but prior period interest can be claimed in five equal installments in next five years right once you start getting your income once the completion of the property starts deduction in respect of self-occupied again in the case of self is allowed a deduction on the account of interest including one-fifth of the accumulated interest of pre-construction one-fifth means again five equal installments simple enough then there are certain conditions with regards to property before 1st april 1999 so if it is loan borrowed before 1st april 1999 for the property has been acquired constructed for any reason the maximum limit of interest is rupees thirty thousand. okay if it is after 1st april 1999 the limit happens to be two lakhs but if it is for uh, after nine, uh, 1st April 99, like as uh, in current scenario, we can say if it is for construction, then it is 2 lakhs. But if it is for the repairs or reconstruction or repairs, renewal or reconstruction, then again, the limit is still 30,000. But for uh, like new property for construction for fresh property, it is 2 lakhs for reconstruction. The limit is still 30,000 per year. Okay. It is uh, like not. Uh, however, the uh, total uh, again. Uh, in uh, maximum of these two also like combined together uh, if it is construction and renewal both maximum can also cannot include uh, cannot exceed two lakhs two lakhs is the overall limit and if it is for fresh property again you get the same limit but if it is reconstruction the limit is still thirty thousand right on the same example there is a question uh, mr uh, what is mr manas owns two house properties one at bombay wherein his family resides and the other at delhi which is occupied which is unoccupied he lives in chandigarh for his employment purpose in a rented house for acquisition of house property at bombay he has taken a loan of rupees 30 lakhs at the rate of 10 percent per annum on 1st april 2021 he has not repaid any amount so far in respect of house property at delhi he has taken a loan of rupees 5 lakhs at 11 percent per annum on 1st october 2021 towards repairs Compute the deduction which would be available to him under section 24b for the assessment year 23-24. That means previous year 22-23, right? So it is prior period interest. Now, how much he can claim on the first property at Bombay? 30 lakhs. 10% means 3 lakhs, but the maximum limit is 2 lakhs. So it cannot exceed 2 lakhs. For the second property, 5 lakhs. 11 percent which happens to be 55,000 but it is for repairs so the maximum limit is 30,000 so again 30,000 
I believe that is what it is given. See, first uh, in case of first, and uh, the answer is given over here. Interest on loan, three lakh, uh, thirty lakhs into ten percent, which is three lakhs, but the restricted to two lakhs. That is the maximum limit. For the second, five lakhs into eleven percent, which is fifty-five thousand, but restriction of thirty thousand. But total interest again two lakhs, thirty thousand. But again, deduction under twenty-four in respect of one and two, about to be restricted to two lakhs. That is also we need to understand. Overall, it cannot go beyond two lakhs. So which which happens to be two lakh thirty, but again we have to restrict it to. Two lakhs, and for this purpose, cert certificate also has to be furnished from the lender of the money. That is also one more condition that you have to remember, right? Now, important point: the ceiling limit would not apply to let out or deemed let out property interest allowable on no, accrual basis. Unpaid purchase price would be considered as capital borrowed. Now, interest on unpaid interest is not deductible. If you are not paying, then you cannot deduct. It has to be paid. Simple enough to understand. The same for the same purpose, this chart is given. Uh, we have already understood this we have already explained this chart if you want to take a picture or screenshot this is this is it for you you can take it right now let's move on uh, this is a step that is given over here how do we calculate first we calculate gav so as to calculate gav we look into two things expected rent and actual rent higher amount we always take like depending upon what is the scenario expected rent is higher of municipal value and fair rent but restricted to standard rent then compared with actual rent whatever is Actual rent will also depend upon uh, unrealized rent. If there is a, there is some unrealized that has to be reduced, then uh, based on that we'll get GAV is the higher of e expected rent and actual rent. From that we reduce the municipal taxes and we get an uh, net annual value. From that deductions are uh, reduced under section twenty four. One is thirty percent standard deduction and the other one is interest on borrowed capital. That is it. On that we have certain uh, illustrations to see. We'll just. Look into the illustration for that is the first example. Uh, Anirudh has a property whose municipal value is rupees one lakh thirty thousand per annum. The fair rent is one lakh ten thousand. So municipal value and uh, fair rent maximum would be uh, like higher of these two will be one lakh thirty. So municipal value we will take and standard rent is one lakh twenty. But one lakh thirty is uh, has to be uh, you know uh, subject to standard rent so 1 lakh 30 is more than standard rent so we'll come down to standard rent now this becomes our expected rent of rupees 1 lakh 20000 the property was let out for a rent of rupees 11000 per month so 11000 into 12 how much does it happens uh, it would be uh, 11000 into 12 something 144 right 144 minus 12 it would be 132 something like 130 1 lakh 32000 so 120 and 132 132 is going to be higher, so 1 lakh 32. The, your actual rent is higher than the expected rent, so GAV is your uh, actual rent, right? Then unrealized rent was rupees 11,000, so reduce this unrealized rent, and uh, he paid municipal taxes at the rent 10% of the municipal value, so municipal value was 1 lakh 30,000. 10% would be 13%. Reduce it, you'll get NAV, and then from NAV reduce 30% as standard. Then we and interest on borrowed capital was rupees forty thousand for the year. Reduce this amount also, you will get income from house property. Compute ER C. ER is uh, C. This much is there. Uh, expected rent is one lakh twenty thousand. Higher of one ten and one twenty. Uh, higher of one thirty and one ten. But maximum is one twenty as standard rent. So we will take max standard rent. One lakh thirty two minus eleven thousand unrealized rent. So the actual rent happens to be one lakh twenty one. But which is higher than the standard rent, so you will take one twenty one as your GAV. Now from this GAV, reduce the municipal taxes of thirteen thousand, which is ten percent of one lakh thirty. You get your NAV. Thirty reduce thirty percent as uh, your standard deduction and forty thousand as interest. So total seventy two four hundred. So income from house property happens to be thirty five six hundred. Simple enough to understand. Let out property vacant for part of the year. Now this is again something where property is vacant. In that case, this. Thing is given. Uh, this is given again. Similar, very similar to the first one we have saw. We have just seen. Then this is a example. You can see. I'll share this document in the description box uh, on the, in the comment section, so you can have a look into it. Even if I'm not sharing, you can find it in the ICAI uh, BOS material. So that is there. Nothing is there. Nothing more is there. This is what is income from house property. If you want me to make dedicated videos on solved examples, we will solve them. One by one, just let us know in the comment section. Let me know in the comment section. I will make videos for sure. This was all about concepts. If you want just practice, then I will make practice videos on solving a dedicated question, right? Not explaining you with the solution, but by actual solving. So we we'll, we will do that also. But for that purpose, I need your approval. If you want, then only we'll do. Otherwise, this is more than enough to understand the concepts, right?
now inadmissible deduction under section 25 there are certain things which are inadmissible so what are inadmissible uh, interest chargeable under this act which is payable outside india shall not be deductible if tax has not been paid or deducted from such interest if you are paying interest to outside india it's your duty to deduct tds on that income if you are not doing that you cannot claim the deduction in respect of which there is no person in india who may be treated as an agent because once the interest is paid it has gone outside of india right there is nothing government can do about it so that is also one thing then provision for arrears of rent and unrealized rent received subsequently so when it is received subsequently at that time it will be included into your income no, but how do we do uh, as per section 25 a1 the amount of rent received in arrears from a tenant or the amount of unrealized rent realized subsequently from a tenant by an ssc shall be deemed to the income from house property in the financial year in which such rent is received or realized and shall be included in the total income of the of the ssc under the head income from house property itself whether the ssc is the owner of the property or not in that particular financial year section 25a2 provides a deduction of 30% of arrears of rent or unrealized rent realized subsequently by the ssc this is standard deduction so if anything you are receiving later on it can be added because in the current year we have given that deduction of unrealized rent but if you are receiving it later or any arrear you are receiving later that will be included simple enough now there is a summary the summary is also very simple to understand taxable in the year of receipt or realization deduction at the rate of 30% and taxable even if the ssc is not the owner of the property simple enough again an example on that uh, nothing much to understand it's very simple treatment of income from co-owned property what happens if it is a co-owned property then it has to be divided where property is owned by two or more persons whose shares are definite and ascertainable then the income from such property cannot be taxed as income of an aop the share income of each such co-owner should be determined in accordance with section 22 to 25 included and in the in uh, individual uh, what what we're saying included in his individual assessment now where the share is definite five people are there and five are equal owner that means everybody will get 20 percent owner and 20 percent would be included in their income where the house property owned by co-owners is self-occupied by each of the co-owners the annual value of the property of each co-owner will be nil and each co-owner shall be entitled to a deduction of rupees 30,000 or 2 lakhs as the case may be under section 24b on account of interest on borrowed capital depending upon it if it is for fresh construction or if it is for our re uh, renewal repairs or reconstruction where the house property owned by co-owner is let out the income from such property shall be computed as if the property is owned by one owner and thereafter the income so computer shall be a portion among each co-owner as per their specific share again this is also very logical very simple enough to understand same summary of sop of 30 lakh uh, in case of sop interest deduction of you know co-owned self property uh, section 26 in case of sop this 30 000, uh, 30 000 or 2 lakhs as the case may be and in case of lop it will be for the overall property not you, you will not get it individually after computing the final income it will be divided in case of sop you'll get the deduction because there is no income attached to it deemed ownership what is deemed ownership as per section 27 the following persons though not legal owners of a property are deemed to be the owners for the purpose of section 22 to 26 transfer to a spouse in case of if you're transferring your property to your spouse again you will be considered as without a, if, if it is uh, like see let's 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 read it out what the provision says in case of transfer of house property by an individual to his or her spouse otherwise than for an adequate consideration the transfer is deemed to be uh, the transferer is deemed to be the owner of the transferred property so if it is for free without any consideration then it is not transfer to a minor child that is also not going to be included that is all where in that case also you are going to be a deemed owner holder of an uh, what is it what is it Imp impartible estate the impartible estate is a property which is not legally divisible the holder of an impartible estate shall be deemed to be the individual owner of all properties comprised in that state if if things cannot be separated then and the entire thing will be considered as your property then after enactment of the hindu succession act 1956 all the properties comprised in an impartible state by custom is to be assessed in the status of a HUF. However, section 27 subsection 2 will continue to be applicable in relation to impartible state by grant or covenant. That is the case. 
member of a cooperative society if you are a member of a cooperative society company or other association of persons to whom building or part thereof is allocated or leased under a how uh, house building scheme of a society company association shall be deemed to be the owner of that building or part thereof allotted to him the, although the cooperative housing society combination is legal owner of that particular building that is also the case person in possession of a property a person who is allowed to take or retain the possession of any building or part thereof in part performance of a contract of the nature referred to in section 53a of the transfer of the property act shall be deemed owner of the house property if the possession has been transferred that would include cases where the possession of the property has been handed over by the handed over to the buyer sale consideration has been paid or promised to be paid the sale deed has not been executed in favor of the buyer although certain other documents like power of attorney agreement to sell etc have been executed that this is about sale of property in that case even if Thing, partly things are not completed even though you will be considered as owner deemed owner basically persons having right in a property for a period not less than 12 years a person who acquires any rights in or with respect to any building or part thereof by virtue of any transaction as is referred to in section 269 ua subsection f that is transferred by way of lease or for not less than 12 years shall be deemed to be owner of that building or property if your lease is for more than 12 years then the lessee also becomes the owner right this is what your income from house property is this is uh, at the end we are trying to say this is what we, ha we have understood uh, if the land is vacant basis of charge how it is going to be this is like an overall summary for it and we have understood i believe how do we do these are the steps we compute fair rent and municipal value whichever is higher it has to be subject to the standard rent then that is what we call it as expected rent this expected rent is calculated uh, compared with actual rent if actual rent is more than the expected rent actual rent becomes your gav if actual rent is less than the expected rent in that case depending upon vacancy or whatever it is if it is a vacancy then actual rent is the gav but if it is not because of the vacancy then expected rent will become your gav not the actual rent and from that gav we reduce uh, municipal taxes paid then we come to nav from that nav we reduce certain deduction as to 30 percent of nav being the standard deduction under 24a and under 24b it is interest on borrowed capital but it is limited to 2 lakhs or 30,000 if it is for a fresh construction then the maximum is 2 lakhs if it is for uh, what we can say reconstruction repairs or renewal the maximum is 30,000 simple enough yes that is what it is then certain inadmissible deductions are there if you are paying to somebody outside of India and you are not deducting, uh, deducting tax at source you cannot claim the deduction that is what it is that's all in this particular video for income from house property now if you want me to solve questions we'll have a separate video on question solving for income from house property but do let us know in the comment section for that we need your approval thanks a lot for watching give us a thumbs up share and subscribe